So we've looked at how to convert between moles and the number of atoms, molecules, particles, you name it, by using Avogadro's number. We've looked at concentration, and we've also looked at moles with relationship with relation to mass and molar mass. So now we're going to look at the final part, which is a challenging problem involving calculation between moles and molarity. Previously, recap, we have seen this equation multiple times now, moles, mass, and molar mass, and how they are related. We've also seen that moles can also be used to figure out concentration. In a aqueous solution, so in a mixture, how concentrated is that mixture? We can calculate that using moles. So moles is very helpful in this case. We see that moles um, is in the unit of mol. It is divided by volume, which is in decimeters cubed. And this division gives us the concentration, which is in molar in big M. Concentration and molarity mean the same thing. So here's an example. Find the concentration required to titrate 50 centimeters cubed of sulfuric acid with 25 centimeters cubed of 2.0 molar of potassium hydroxide. So just looking at this question, we can see that we're given the volume of sulfuric acid. We're given the volume as well as the concentration of potassium hydroxide. What we probably don't know right now is what does titrate mean? So let's take a look. Titrate means exactly this chemical process. So this process is a neutralization. So you're neutralizing an acid, which in this case is sulfuric acid. It's very acidic with a very strong base. When you mix these two together, it neutralizes and the solution becomes neutral. That's good because that doesn't harm the environment. Um, and here in this case, we don't know the concentration of sulfuric acid. So we have to use this neutralization, this titration process to figure out the concentration of sulfuric acid. When we do titrations, you always have, um, one of the titrants in the burette. The burette is the one that drips down. In this case, we have potassium hydroxide in the burette and we have a conical flask containing sulfuric acid, which in this case is colored purple. Find the concentration required to titrate 50 centimeters cubed of sulfuric acid with 25 centimeters cubed of 2.0 molar of potassium hydroxide. First thing we do here is we need to balance the equation. We need to figure out how many moles are required. So after balancing the equation, because it's neutralization reaction, so we know the product, one of the products has to be water. You're neutralizing it. The other one will be a salt. In this case is potassium sulfate. Now this tells us that for every two moles of potassium hydroxide, we theoretically only need one mole of sulfuric acid. So you see here, you have two moles of potassium hydroxide after this equation is balanced, and you only need one mole of sulfuric acid. Now, what we just calculated here was theoretical. Notice how I noted this as theoretical. Now we have to find the actual moles because this is in theory what we will need. This, these data that's given to us was the actual, what we calculated in an experiment. We are given 2.0 molar and we're given 25 centimeters cubed. So, Knowing these two, knowing the concentration and the volume, we can calculate the moles using the equation. We're given centimeters cubed, which means in this case, we need to divide this by a thousand and convert this into our favorite unit, decimeters cubed. And then you multiply this by the concentration of 2.0 molar, and that's going to give us 0.05 moles of potassium hydroxide. In this case, we see that, again, looking at this equation, that's where this balanced equation comes in handy, is that it tells us we only need half the amount of moles for sulfuric acid. We don't need the same amount as potassium hydroxide. So this means that if, we're, if in our experiment we use 0.05 moles of potassium hydroxide, then we only need half of that for our sulfuric acid. So we divide 
this by 2, and we get 0.025 moles of sulfuric acid. So by this point, we've already calculated the moles of sulfuric acid by looking at the ratio, the theoretical ratio in our equation that we just balanced. Now, previously, we just solved that we needed 0.025 moles of sulfuric acid required. This next step is find the concentration of sulfuric acid in this experiment. So we can finally reach the final, the stage of figuring out the concentration. We have our moles. We also have what is given to us, 50 centimeters cubed of sulfuric acid. Again, it's given in centimeters cubed and we don't like that. So we need to convert that into our decimeters cubed by dividing it by a thousand. We then plug these two values that we've calculated into our concentration equation of moles over volume. And this is the concentration for sulfuric acid, right? And we get 0.5 molar of sulfuric acid. 